Before we begin, don't forget that you can follow us at Tips for IT Pros on Twitter. Now, following up on our Docker series, um, I want to do a quick video on Kubernetes. Now, Kubernetes has uh, multiple different versions in terms of you have a uh, micro Kubernetes, which is a single server, and you also have a full-blown cluster, which potentially represents your production Kubernetes. So today we're gonna to go ahead and we're gonna use the Snaps install for the micro Kubernetes in order to get going with what is effectively a standalone instance that you might use for installation purposes. So I'm gonna use the commands on screen, uh, which you're gonna see here as an example, the sudo snaps install micro k8s dash classic uh, which is the kubernetes uh, microservice installation um, the main reason you might use this is that let's say you're a developer and you want to test all your kubernetes deployments but not necessarily have a full environment or even go to production to in order to test them so this is the point of doing the installation whereby you would not need a full-blown cluster equally if you're an admin and you just want to learn the commands this is very good for you as well. The difference between production and the Kubernetes standalone that you have here is you wouldn't have the micro 8 in front of it. So here you have the micros.8 Kubernetes CL and then we're going to do a get all and get all named namespaces and just show the output to prove that our cluster is up and running. Now as you can see our base installation cluster is now up and running with an age of 26 seconds. Now we're going to quickly check the Kubernetes version because we want to see how old or what the current version is that's installed by the snaps at this point. Now bearing in mind this is January 3rd when I'm doing this. So in this case this happens to be version 1.13.1. Not a bad version, all things considered. Uh, most of the scripts that you'll see out there in the wild refer to version 1.11 being minimum requirements. Now, we need to do a couple of other steps, one of which is to get their DNS dashboard up and running, which is one of the primary services for a standalone cluster. As you can see, that, that takes only a little bit of effort, and again, command is pasted hopefully on the screen, as you'll see now. Now, depending on the speed of your machine, which is obviously debatable, some of us have new hardware, some of us have old hardware, others, well, well, let's see. Um, frankly, uh, we're just going to do a quick watch and check that the services are up and running. So we're going to go back to the namespaces. And as you can see, we've got a couple of services that are basically trying to start up. So we've got our container services being created. And as an example, we've got four, four, two, three. So we, you can see it's kind of in the process of starting up and then eventually that's, that's done. So now that those are all started up, we can get on with something a little bit more intuitive and say our cluster is now up, even if it is a single node cluster. So next step we're gonna go with is let's go and create some services. Now I wanna point out there's two parts to this. Uh, first of all, remember that Kubernetes, like Docker, has very much, uh, in a production environment, a container versus services based relationship. And to kind of demonstrate that container basis services relationship, what we're going to do is we're going to create three containers. So we're going to use the run command. By the way, the, the run is now deprecated. You should use the create. Um, don't worry, I'll put that on the screen. Uh, and we're going to create the images from just a regular Docker container image, nothing special. And we're going to use like three replicas. Now, we're not going to expose ports or anything with that in itself. Because what we're going to do is the second part is create a service, which in this case will act as our load balancer and our network activity that will basically distribute amongst the three containers we just created. And from that point of view, this is where we have that kind of service relationship. So you're not directly connecting to a container any more than you would directly connect to a cluster node. You're connecting to a cluster package, or in this case, a load balancer. So we're creating, when we say the exposed here, 
and the ports and creating a cluster IP, what we're effectively doing is creating a load balancer to those three um, replicas. So using this, you have that kind of slight difference but at the same time it's something you see very much in a swarm environment in um, docker now that's created effectively we have the ability to go to any and i emphasize any of the containers basically by just throwing the ip into the terminal and connecting to them now in order to prove that that's done, I could just spin it up and the rest, but frankly, go ahead, do this yourself, it's it's relatively easy. But from this point of view, we can also quickly check. So here we have the Kubernetes uh, cluster IP, but we also have now our service IP as well that we created. And as you can see, it's perfectly operational, It's and we can connect to that, that that's easily done. Now we don't have an external IP because we haven't configured any external IPs or anything else for this um, particular cluster but that that's something that could be done now hopefully you found this video instructive if you did hit like if you didn't you know what to do and as always subscribe for more content